Hello everybody, it's Jazzy. Welcome to year four of Merm on the Moon, my new solo word series. This run has existed almost exclusively in the beta branch of DST, and as of this year, we are still in the Terrors Below beta, which added the cave rifts. Before I activate the rifts, I want to make sure that Wirt is properly situated resource-wise. So that means this year we are going to get our gold supply locked in, and also start farming what is arguably Wirt's most important food to farm, and I'm not talking about durians or dragon fruits. But first we're going to do a shadow piece fight for another atrium. I'm going to try it again with merms in the order that I meant to do them the first time. Getting the rook out of the way should reduce the amount of splash damage that my merms take in phase two. I do want to save the knight for last, but I can't get hit by phase two or it'll aggro the merms. So I'm keeping my distance and using an ice staff to target the merms onto the bishop. I have to do this after every bishop attack because the merms just completely lose aggro. Tier three knight is easy for a crew of merms because there's no splash damage. A couple merms may die, but there's no way they're all going down before the boss. Next time I want to try the bishop first because I think the tier two rook will aggro the merms on its own without my help. We'll see. After that, Wirt will embark on a very important mission to find the Moon Key Island. The unnatural portal resources are important for every character, but especially so for Wirt. And believe it or not, turning into a monkey is going to be the most important benefit. But first we need to find the island. What I typically like to do is sail all the way out to the edge of the world and then sail back in a couple of screens and then sail around the world while keeping that distance from the world edge. I did get a pirate raid in year two, so I'm gonna check the sea around there first. And it actually doesn't take long to find the docks and the cannons and the suspiciously colored boats. Now I'm gonna wait to clear the island until winter and I'll explain why in a little bit. Barriger's back and Mama Wirt needs more wood. Always needs more wood. Even though we got merms, Barriger will always be my number one tree farmer, and I'm happy to use him while I can. When I'm done, I will let him rest in the savanna, but I'm afraid the next time we meet, there will be a harsher exchange. Now it's winter and time to cleanse Moon Key Island, and the merms are going to help. I'm not happy to have to do this, but the monkeys are going to be a constant pain if I don't deal with them now. I am rarely an advocate for destroying non-renewable structures, but I don't like the look of walled off huts. Powder monkeys aren't that great for any drops and they can potentially screw you over big time. This one time on the endless server, I actually had a monkey steal a bone armor and then I had to force spawn a pirate raid to get it back out of a stash. They're not worth the trouble, so I'm just gonna burn the huts. I'm doing this in winter because the monkeys won't come voluntarily out of their huts, so I can smoke them out one at a time and let the merms dispatch them. I put a stack of twigs in my first inventory slot because when monkeys steal from you, they start with items in that slot. So just in case they get a couple swipes in on me, it won't matter too much. Now, I'm giving bananas to the queen to take back some trinkets, but I'm trying to save enough of them so that I can leave the island as wonky. Problem is, as soon as I morph, the merm guards will unfollow. I was actually worried that they would turn on me, but I think we're okay as long as the king is alive. So I'm leaving the trinkets on the ground until all the monkeys have been cleared. Then I'm dismissing the merms just in case anything glitches with their aggro. This is still a hardcore world. Then I will absorb the 10th trinket and achieve Nirvana. Now you may be asking, what have you done? I basically stuck as wonky until I can get more bananas. Well, I grabbed a few bushes from the island and I can start growing them this winter, but I am going to use this form for a few major benefits while I have it. First thing on the list is to make meaty stew. Wirt is playing out her darkest fantasies right here, and it is delicious and disgusting simultaneously. I'm just trying to mortify her into a coma when she switches back to a merm with that odd aftertaste in her mouth. You know, I rewrote that sentence quite a few times. But that's not why we're a monkey. We are a monkey because these trinkets have been burning a hole in my chest for long enough. Not a hole in this chest, the, the chest on the ground the ground chest. With our hairy disguise, we are going to commit some bulk consumerism on the false king. Wirt can change to wonky anytime she wants to get gold from pig king. Does this count as character swapping? It's probably character swapping. We do need to kill the pigs because they are hostile to monkeys. Okay, can anyone check to see if pigs are hostile to spelunkies? I mean, I, I would check it, but I'm editing, so... On the way back home, I stumbled across a pirate stash, which is weird because I haven't fought off any raids. There was one warning I got in year two, but I never saw the raid. So maybe the stash spawns when the raid triggers? I don't really know, but anyways, thank you. 
very much for the funny bird hat. While waiting for bananas to grow, I'm getting over to Colossus for round four. The real loot was the wax paper we made along the way. I do like scales, but until I fight the Toad of Mystery, the most important loot I can get from this fight is Shroom Skin. One other task I've been putting off for a while is replanting kelp at the oasis. For me, kelp is one of the best food sources for wort. Easy to harvest, grows year round, immune to wildfires, can be dried for sanity food. I like to take all my kelp and tuck it into a corner so I can harvest it all at once. And I do this by planting the kelp in the water, then using a boat to nudge each piece into the corner. It has to be a corner. If you shove it onto a flat edge, then the kelp will just get uprooted. And if I mess up and move the kelp to a wrong corner, then I'll just use the trident to get the stock back then I'll replant it. In a lot of ways, I like kelp for wort better than stone fruit. You pick and eat it, there's no harvesting or bundling needed. When wort is basing and doesn't want to spend time prepping or harvesting any food, kelp's the jam. Not not the jam that, that got nerfed with the egg recipes, but the like jam jam. I'm spending my time as wonky gathering resources while I wait for my bananas to regrow but I'm already feeling the downsides of not being wort. My pet sunfish are spoiling super fast, so I need to use a thermal stone. And in spring, the frogs hate me. The silver lining is that frogs actually sleep at night now, so we can get a bit of work done at night without too much harassment. Hey, you know my favorite time to get hound waves? I actually don't know, but it's not on small islands with not a lot of room to maneuver. I remember an endless server where we had a couple players based on Pearl's Island. It was a great looking base, but man, we rolled back a lot that server. A single firehound would level the whole place to the ground. Pearl and her indestructible home, surrounded by dust and ash, which was all that remained of humanity's opulence. Anyways, it's time to switch back to Wurt. I brought a bunch of extra bananas with me, so I will trade them for a variety of blueprints. Eventually, I'll set up a cartography table over here, and then I can farm papyrus while the portal runs. I also want to snag a few Cresta Shines while I'm here. I have an idea for some decorations. Now that we've unlocked dock kits, I can start to build docks that will connect the oasis to a number of useful biomes, starting with a straight shot to the swamp, where all my merms are still living. But soon we'll also be able to connect the dragonfly desert, the portal, the forest. It's gonna make everything feel a whole lot closer. My jelly beans were getting low, so I'm sneaking in another bee queen fight. It's one of the easiest boss fights to repeat with Wirt's merms, and it's always useful getting extra jelly beans and honeycomb. We could also deconstruct extra bee queen crowns for more honeycomb and jelly beans. Also, it's just very satisfying and I don't need any other excuse. After you beat Celestial Champion for the first time, Wagstaff will start to appear randomly in your world asking for a crown shard if you didn't activate the rifts yet. It's different from the shadow rifts where you just go back to the atrium whenever you want to. On the surface, you either need to find Wagstaff or fight Celestial Champ again. Regardless, I have Glowcat plans for the extra shard and I don't feel like deconstructing the one crown I currently have, so dude can wait until I get my second crown. My idea for the centerpiece build is a quasi memorial to the monkeys that I massacred on the island. So it'll have a sort of nautical theme with the mask some Crusta Shines, a sunken chest, and some mannequins rocking some sea apparel. I'm going to use astral detectors for wall corners, but because of the collision box, I need to place these before the walls. Otherwise, they won't fit. Astral detectors are one of my favorite decor items. They are fireproof, put out a bit of light, have a dynamic animation, and most importantly, give me an actual late game use for Thulacite. If the sound ever bothers you, you could always restart your game and the humming will be gone. I really hope that eventually this trick will work for restrained static and spark arcs. Those things are loud. The one seasonal phenomenon for which Wirt still has no safeguard is the rain on the final day of spring. Oh, come on! Rain in summer will disable the sandstorm, which is needed for antlion to spawn. So when it starts raining right at the end of spring, it means I need to wait first for the rain to stop, and then for the world temperature to go up enough for the sandstorms to start. So after two days of waiting for the rain to stop, I said, the hell with this, and I ran down to the caves. I want to fight Fuel Weaver and get my second bone armor. Now, this fight's gonna be fun, because I can use the loot from the first Fuel Weaver 
and it's going to save me a bit of resources. For weapons, I'm using a glass cutter for phase one, then switching to a club for phase two. I'm dropping the shadow thurble on the ground, and this creates an area in which Fuel Weaver can't snare me. So phase one is a very straightforward kiting round. In phase two, I can use the bone helm to kill the unseen hands. It's better than a nightmare amulet because it doesn't lose durability when used. When everything has been cleared, I can tank Fuel Weaver on top of the Thurble. So the Thurble is necessary if you want to negate all damage with two bone armors. Without one, Fuel Weaver will also be casting bone snares, which will absorb one use of the armor and the next attack will come before the cooldown. Here I was planning on switching between a bone armor and Thulacite suit, but I had plenty of sanity food, so I opted instead to just wear a Thulacite crown and let it take the damage every other hit. Even with just one bone armor, you save so much in armor and healing. It's definitely worth using for the fight. I appreciate how much this fight benefits from repeated victories. After four Fuel Weaver kills, you'll have enough Thurbles to cover practically the entire area in Snare Protection, so the fight gets cheaper and cheaper. And we haven't even got started with Bright Shade gear. On my way out, I'm stopping by the Slurtles to grab some slime, which is objectively the best and most satisfying way to farm stone fruit. It would also behoove me to just leave extra minerals in a chest nearby, but I ain't got time for that kind of planning because we gotta go kill Antlion before our base actually sinks down into the caves. I'm too lazy to get the merm, so I'll fight Antlion with my beeflo. This is actually not a super safe fight to do with the beeflo. And if you do this, I would recommend bringing a lazy explorer. Just in case you get stuck and your beeflo hits the red, you can teleport out, heal up, and try again. I'm spending the rest of summer finishing up this centerpiece build. I got the stone walls and the fences all set up, and inside I will put two mannequins, each sporting a dark sword and bandana. I may swap out for battle paddles later on. We'll see. There is a skin for the summer frest that I think would look very swashbuckler-ish for the mannequins. So while we farm resources with the merms, I'm gonna keep an eye out for redbirds and grab enough feathers to make two summer frests. And at the tail end of summer, I enjoyed a completely botched dragonfly fight. I wanted to see how much I could just let the larva chase me around while the merms kept fighting the boss. And it might have worked if it were not for the merms taking constant fire damage from running into the lava ponds. And also from the larva every time they ran past one. If I'm gonna do this fight without walling up the ponds, then I need to get it done faster. And that means killing the larva and helping out with the boss. Otherwise, the merms are just gonna all burn to death. And on that up uplifting note, it's the end of year four. Next year, it's time to hit the rifts hard. It's rift day. Rift year. Whatever. Word has the beginning of a great setup, and soon this world will be starting the Host of Horrors beta. But first, more Moonstorms, and of course, more monkeys. Hope you enjoyed the recaps, and see you soon for year five.